Hey folks, welcome back to the bench. Well, I'm back on the RC snowmobile. I've decided I'm going to give it another uh, another go. I got a couple ideas on how to uh, deal with a few of the issues that I uh, was foreseeing. One being the uh, trailing arm and the other being the motor mount and so on. Uh, for the motor mount, I've kind of come to the conclusion that I don't want to bother with the nitro engine. I think it's going to be too much. And also another issue with the nitro engine. Uh, just grab it here. Look at the pull starter. Just to give you an idea. If you pull the pull starter this up, like so, it means the motor is going to rotate. If you look forward, it's going to rotate counterclockwise. So sitting in there, that's the way almost all the nitro engines are going to be. Sitting in there going to rotate counterclockwise which would cause this gear to rotate this way and lo and behold can't really see I don't know if you can see if I do it this way if I rotate the gear the same way the motor would the track goes backwards so I'd have to uh, do some uh, monkeying around with the gear system not use the gear system take out this center gear and then that would rotate this this uh, input shaft the same direction and it would still rotate backwards so it's kind of uh, a problem that I uh, came across so decided to scrap the idea of the uh, nitro engine and go with the electric get just as much power it's going to be much easier to mount I've got plenty of brushed and uh, brushless, op brushless options I can use so, I figured what I would do today, this evening, is try to get these trailing arms uh, figured out. Now I've got an idea on either using the uh, Traxxas ball ends, like that, or the Dubro ones, which are actually a standard, not a metric. But I'm going to try, try something with these Traxxas ones first. I think the combination of these Traxxas end links and one of these countersunk screws with a little bit of doctoring. If you look on the uh, edge, of, edge of that, it's got like a little bit of a flange built in. So I'm thinking I'll pull, if I take that flange off, then this screw is going to sit down far enough that it'll clear in here. So I'm going to pop one of these apart and maybe take to the belt sander and see, uh, see if it fits. Okay, that was simple enough. I got the uh, ball end uh, done. What I did was I used my belt sander, and it is a brass. I sanded it off, and then I used the countersink bit, one of these jobbies. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, you won't be able to see necessarily, but I drilled or countersunk that end so that. When the screw drops down, it's probably got some, there we go, a little bit of cuttings in there. The screw will sit down in there a little bit. Just like, yeah, let's see if it focuses. It's like so. So now, what I'm going to do, now I don't think I want to just force the uh, screw in there because the plastic's a little bit brittle, so what I'm going to normally I just push it in there so it cut its own thread, but I think that would be a bad idea in this case. I'm just going to take and drill this out. Better double check. Yeah, that's the right bit. Drill it out carefully. I'm a little worried that these little stubs will break, but if they do, I'll figure out a way to beef them up. So that's drilled out. I'm going to take and snap this in to a link end. Like so. I'm going to try not to pinch my finger. There we go. So that's in. Rotate this out of the way. Now the threads are still going to be a little bit, or sorry, the hole will be a little bit uh, too small. So, just find the proper driver here, should be a 2mm. 
There it is. Oh, better fingers. I know I might got the camera positioned. It's probably hard for you to see, so I may, uh, I'll move it for the next shot. Now, of course, I could probably go with a shorter screw. That one's uh, about a mile and a half longer than it needs to be. So we'll go down to. Let's see. I'm using uh, the screws I'm using are uh, hex pack screws. So I saw it in one of my previous videos. I got you this set. I actually got ended up with two sets. And I'm glad I uh, screwed up the order because they're sure coming in handy. We use them for a lot of stuff. And not even just RC stuff. Been using them in other things too. Like my uh, light setup in the car and a few other things too. Oh, thread. Come on. I'll thread this in. Keep my fingers crossed it doesn't break. Should be okay. And keep all my fingers and toes crossed that I get the clearance I need. And it's looking good. Still got enough uh, articulation in that ball end. And I can always throw a nut on the bottom. Might be a little bit of binding there, so I'll, I don't know. I'll have to be careful. And there we go. Talk about uh, close, but it works. And I'm kind of flexing things, and it's not catching, so I'm happy. That's going to work out great. So. I will make the other one for the other side, just like so. And then the next step is to take these guys, get them to the right length. And there might still be an issue with the uh, ball end catching on this edge, so I may have to take my Dremel and make a little bit of room there, unless the Dubro one would fit better, which it might. So I might go that route too. These are a little bit lower profile yet. Might give me a little more clearance, and I can still use them on these, on these axial links. So uh, I'll figure that out and uh, show you the result. Well, I got the trailing arms mounted. I used the Dubro ball end instead, give me a little more clearance, and then I used the Traxxas one on this end, just bolted it through the existing hole, but. That's kind of high up. I gotta go look at my own sled and see how high up the trailing arm is, but I know it's not stuck to the side like that. It's kind of goofy, so I might take this off and maybe move it down as far as I can go, or possibly even up underneath, tuck it underneath. We'll see see how it lines up, but uh, might make it look a little bit better. As well, I got the servo mounted and it's clamped in because I used some goop similar to shoe goo to hold it in. This is a temporary servo, it's just a cheap old JR plastic geared servo and as well the servo saver is one I cobbled together. You can see the black and the white and cobbled it together from a few different pieces just so I had something until I can get a better one like a Kimbro or something or one of the Offna ones and then uh, I can continue on with the steering linkages I think uh, it's going to work out okay using this rod. It'll come in, it'll just clear there. We'll have to see. Might have to uh, do something a little different. Maybe use some slightly smaller rod, but uh, I'll figure it out. And then after that's done, I can go ahead and uh, figure out the, the drivetrain. Get an electric motor, make a bracket to hold it, just out of some angle aluminum or something and then figure out how to interface with this existing gears. And also I'm going to open up the uh, gearbox and see what's inside, see if there's anything I can do to beef it up, make it a little bit better, hold up to the stress. But uh, can't do really anything until this is dried. So. I am going to uh, call it an evening, say uh, this part's complete, and then hopefully in a couple days I'll be able to get out and do another video for you of the snowmobile. Until then, take care and talk to you later.